I'm Terry Parker. Uh, I've, uh, I work in the Library and Media Resources Center. Uh, uh, I've been there since 1981. I also teach at John in the Co-op Education Department. So I've had uh, a couple hats to wear while I've, while I've been here. I started out um, in a small town in East Spencer, North Carolina, and um, population like probably 800 people. Uh, during Memorial Day, that's when visitors would come in and would be <laughs> dropped out and dropped back to about 600 when everybody would go back to where they came from. Uh, but uh, it was a small town and uh, very segregated, okay, and um, I, I went to the same segregated school for 10 years, okay, and this was around 1969, and the forced busing, the integration came into effect where uh, we were sent to another school, which was across the tracks, a larger school, which was uh, before 1969, before 68, was predominantly white. So uh, we, it was 300 of us went over and uh, we integrated the school and a lot of issues came up in, into being. Uh, we had a lot of adjustments we had to make. The school had a lot of adjustments it had to make, and it was kind of an exciting time, but it was a little bit turbulent during, during certain times, too, also, because I think most of us were, at first, when we found out that, that they was closing, dear old Dunbar, Dunbar High School was the, what was the school, Dunbar School, it was the same school that my mother went to, my father went to, and so it was uh, uh, a real heartbreaker for them to close the high school down, okay. Uh, so they kept the elementary school and the junior high there for a while, and, but then that eventually closed down too. But there was a lot of heartbroken people when they closed the schools down because most of the time these segregated schools and black schools were not only just schools, they were a very central part of the community, especially when your families and everyone went to them. And so they were just as as important as the church was at that particular time. There was no other schools that we went to except for that one in our community. So when we finally went to the school, we had to deal with our own issues about race and we had to deal with someone else's issues about race. So it was, it was quite turbulent times, but it was also kind of exciting when we look back on it. Because I think most of us uh, was excited about something new and going somewhere different you know, when you're young, you 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 can't anticipate that. Our parents had a different perspective on what we were doing. Okay, we were going, we were being placed in harm's way. Uh, if you listen to our parents, you know, because our, most of our parents didn't want this, want integration. Okay, they wanted things to be the same. When we got integrated over into North Rand High School. There was a lot of problems with some students and some faculty members. There were people that were being expelled because they were getting into fights. Okay, there was issues about uh, the parents felt that the school was not responding to to the situation the way that they should have, and uh, so there were meetings at the churches. There was two churches in East Spencer. Okay. Um, one was Methodist and one was Baptist, okay, all <laughs> right, and so and and they they met about these issues about what did what could they do, how could they uh, keep s kids from being expelled, and uh, then there were the schools was closed for about two weeks, okay. The National Guard was called in, uh, so. Uh, you kind of get sucked into it, and you don't want to get sucked into it. There's, you know, you don't. It wasn't like a formal thing. It was just all of a sudden you seemed like all hell had just broken loose, you know. And school wasn't school anymore, you know. And it took a while for it to become school again. I I didn't get into any fights. I wasn't one of the fighters. I <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> uh, I remember some good situations. That's what I remember more than the bad situations. The, the good situations I remember is being in class with 
with classmates who you uh, wasn't in class with last year and you're finding out that you have things that are very common that you laugh at the same jokes that you think think the same things are funny and that you talk there were many kids on both sides black and white who really wanted to have who wanted to have a good time in school you know who had been accustomed to having a good time in school you know and and, and they didn't want to draw these these lines but sometimes you couldn't help it because there would be someone else in class who didn't feel that way or or you would get an instructor who would who you would think didn't give you the credit that you deserve for something you know you know but uh, you know you try to uh, block it out and, and, and go on you know you try not to let it eat you up and just the first day of school this is what I saw and and the bus loads of kids saw we coming down we cross there's this bridge that went over the tracks from East Spencer to West Spencer. North Ryan was where, where uh, uh, it, uh, that was in West Spencer. So we crossing the bridge, we come down this hill, and there's this dummy hanging from the roof of uh, North Ryan High as a lynching summer. That was the first day of class. That was the first day of class. So. Uh, my experience at North Ryan, although there were some really nice teachers there, okay, who were who I felt that they really tried to uh, make a bad situation good. Uh, my mother told me that maybe I shouldn't be there, uh, so at the end of the year I transferred out to Salisbury High, and the school system in that school went through the same thing, but the results were very different. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the school that I that Dunbar closed to and went to I, it was called North Rowan. It was a count North Rowan, Rowan, and it was a county school system, which was a different school system than the city school system. Salisbury High, which was the large town next to East Spencer, had a high school called Price High, which is a black school, which the kids in that neighborhood went to. Uh, but when they had the forced integration with, between Price and Salisbury High, the parents, a parent organization from both groups came together that summer before, okay, before school started and they sit down and they worked out certain things. And certain things that they worked out was that they agreed to change the school colors. They, they agreed to change the mascot of the school, okay. And not too much, but they did change it because Price was the Red Devils. The black school was the Red Devils. And Borton High, which was actually, before they changed the name, uh, Sal it's Salisbury High now, but it was originally called Borton High. Borton uh, was the Yellow Jackets, okay? And so you had Red Devils and Yellow Jackets, okay? And the people in, in Salisbury, decided that since they was bringing these two schools together, they had to do something to so to appease each group, but not to alienate too many people. So what they did was they created, they changed the Yellow Jackets to the Hornet, and they gave the Hornet like a red stripe, a red, a red and black tail. Mm -hmm. That would take some of the price colors over to, okay. Uh, so those things went a long way, and then they decided to have uh, a black homecoming queen and a white homecoming queen, okay, that first year, okay, so that the, f the schools would feel, both groups would feel like that they had something in power. None of that took place in my community when none of that took place. But, but I mean, it didn't take long from 69, but when we first went over and we see this lynching emblem there, not, I mean, certainly racism didn't leave in 16, okay, it didn't leave in 73, and it, it, and it hasn't left, and it hasn't left then, but I think that people begin to make an attempt to uh, live together, okay, uh, it certainly didn't, there was a place 
across the street from um, the high school, Dunbar High School, old Dunbar High School. It was called Crowder's, Crowder's Hamburgers and Hot Dogs. This person made these ha homemade hamburgers that were like by hand, and they were um, really good. And the only people uh, who kind of knew about that was the community, with the exception of the few white delivery people who delivered the meat and, the, and who de delivered the bread and who delivered the, the sodas and stuff like that. So occasionally you would see uh, people come over um, uh, just to get these hamburgers and hot dogs. This was in 68, 69, who were not black. But in 71 and 72 and 73, you know, you begin to see more and more people traveling in and out of uh, East Spencer who were white. And that's, and that's clearly directly related to, because then you started having kids playing football and basketball, and then you started having interracial dating. And you attribute this to school integration. Yes, yeah, yeah clearly, clearly. Okay, there was no interracial dating that I knew of before 1968, but I'm sure it existed, but I didn't see any of it. Okay, but in 71 to 72, you saw a lot of it. Okay, and, and you would go, you would actually go, uh, go to town, as we said, go up to the business area, and you would see kids walking down the street holding hands. I mean, this, that's how fast it happened. Now, they, you, what year was that? This was 72 and 73, right before I came to New York. So it only took a few years before this, and it was very common at that time.